Hello. So in this video, we're going to look at an example of both a confidence interval for a mean and a hypothesis test for a mean. And formally, that's called a one-sample t-interval for a mean for the confidence interval and one-sample t-test for the mean. All right, so in this example, we're looking at, we're given that the average volume of soda for a sample of 18 cans of brand X cola is 12.3 ounces with standard deviation of the sample 0.09 ounces. Make a 95% confidence interval for the average volume of soda in brand X cola. Assume the distribution of the cola is normal. All right, well, so I'm going to create what I call, organize the information in what I call an info box. So the trait is the volume, right, the amount of fluid in the soda for all brand X cola. So here's the trait, and it's numerical, brand X cola. Uh, that's your population, all the cans, well actually all the cans, technically, <laughs> of, the, of the brand X cola, so technically the cans. And then let's see, we have 18 as the sample size, and it tells us the average is, see the average is 12.3, so that's my Y bar, the sample. I took a sample of 18 cans, popped open each can open, and put it into some kind of a measuring cup, and wrote down 18 values, averaged those 18 values, and got Y bar is 12.3 ounces. Then found the standard deviation is 0.09, so that's S. All right. And now we're asked to find a confidence interval, and they tell us to assume the distribution of the an understood volume of cola is normal. All right. So one thing I wanted to just mention uh, before we start out is a comparison of the conditions for the yes/no trait versus uh, numerical trait. Really, they're the same. We're going to have to check conditions always. Independent, where the outcome of one trait won't affect the outcome of another, is the same for yes-no trait as it is for numerical. Randomization, everything has an equal chance of being selected. That's the same for yes-no trait as numerical. 10% rule, where the sample size is small relative to the population, meaning it's less than 10% of the population. That's the same for yes-no trait and numerical. So it's the same in all of these. The only place where it differs is in the representative sample. So for a yes-no trait, you have to show you have 10 yeses and 10 noes, and usually the way we do that it was to take the sample size, multiply it by the mean p, and show that in general for that sample size, you'll have at least 10 of the people or objects that have the trait in your samples, and 10 people or objects that don't have the trait in your, in your samples. So that's the yes-no trait. For a numerical trait, it depends if you're on your sample size. The nice case is if you have more than at least 30, so then the central limit theorem applies and you're fine. You know that the distribution of sample means will be normal, and if you need to work on this, there's a video on the simulation of central limit theorem, so take a look at that. Now, if your sample size is less than 30, you either have to be told the population is normal, which in this case we were, right? We were told right here, assume the distribution of the cola, of the cola is normal. Or if you're given data, you have to show that the sample is approximately normal, and you use either histogram, box plot, or normal probability plot. All right? So this is really where the extra work is in a numerical trait. All right? Now, specifically for this problem then, let's set up, set up our info box, and then we'll do our conditions. What I have is y bar is 12.3, s is 0.09, and n is 18. So every time you do a numerical trait, or you're working with a numerical trait, this is the information you need to find in each problem, right? Now, let's take a look at our conditions. We know the volume of soda in one can won't affect the volume in another. 10% rule, 18 is very small, obviously it's small, less than 10% of all cans of Brand X Cola. It would be very easy to randomly select 18 cans. And we are told the distribution of the cola is normal. So we're good. Conditions are very good. So now we want to make a confidence interval. So remember to make a confidence interval. Always, regardless of what it is we're testing, we want to start with a sample, estimate, and then add or subtract a margin of error. Okay. So in our case, we want to start out with y bar, a sample mean, plus or minus t times standard error. And this is going to be s, the standard, standard deviation of the sample, over square root of n. All right. 
So, using our info box, we actually have most of our information there. There's y bar, so we would say 12.3 plus or minus. We're going to have to look up t in our t multiplier sheet, but let's put in s.09 right. divided by square root of 18. Right. Sample size. All right. And then we have to look up our multiplier. Now we have n is 18, so we have degrees of freedom equals 17, right? And we're doing we're looking up a 95% confidence level. So here is our multiplier sheet. And we're going to look up, let's see, 17 degrees of freedom and 95% confidence. That's going to give me 2.110. So now, generally what you can do is, I go ahead and find what is 0 0.09 divided by square root 18. Uh, this piece right here is 0 0.02, if you put that in your calculator, okay? And then, remember, I kind of like to do this. I like to put it in all at once, so let's see, it's 12.3, and I'll do the lower end minus 2.110 times 0 0.02. I'll get the first value, 12.5, uh, 2578. And then I'll recall the entire line by pressing second, enter. And I'll just back key until I'm on top of the minus sign. I'll overwrite with a plus sign and then press enter. 12.347, 34, sorry, 22. So let's write that down. 12. 2578 to 12.3422. All right. So there's our confidence interval, and to go ahead and interpret it, we would say with a 95% confidence, the average, you must have that word, and then what's the trait? It's volume, volume of cola in the population brand X in brand X soda is between 12 point let's say 26 ounces and 12.34 ounces all right okay so a general format you can use is with a blank confidence, right? The average of a trait of a population is between blank and blank. Right? That's what we did. The average volume was my trait, right? of what is all brand X soda, that's my population, is between, and then you give me the two values. All right? Now, let's take a look at a hypothesis test now. So same example, same example with same information. The only difference is now we're told the manufacturer of brand X cola claims an average of 12 ounces of soda per can. Per can and they ask you to use the confidence interval that we got, right? And we got 12.34 uh, to, um, let's see here, oh, 12.26. 12.26 to 12.34. So the idea is we have here 12.26 on some number line, 12.34. We believe that mu, the average volume of all the Kansas soda is somewhere in here and the manufacturer claims 12, right? So they want me to do a hypothesis test and I need to come up with an alternative hypothesis, the HA. So I think that based on my confidence interval, all of these values are higher or larger or bigger than 12. So I'm gonna say that, hey, I think mu is more than 12, what the claim is, right? So that's how I'm gonna start out my hypothesis. Now let's take a look. Remember, the info box is still the same here, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that up on the next page. 
So let me write that in the corner here. Y bar is 12.3, S is 0.09, N is 18. Right? And when we found standard error of Y bar, that's S over square root of N, which is 0.09 over square root of 18, which we got was 0.02. Okay. All right. So we're going to start out, and our hypothesis then is we believe that the average amount of cola in all brand X, in all brand X soda is more than 12 ounces, and the manufacturer claims that it is 12 ounces. Okay? So then check conditions. The conditions are going to be the same as they were before. Let's see here. That doesn't change, right? The volume of one can of soda won't affect another, 18 is less than 10% of all cans, random sampling is easy and assumed, we're told the distribution is normal. So we're all good to go. Now, once we make conditions, then we can say, well, I know what kind of sample means I should expect to see. And what are those? Well, they should, if it's true that the average amount of soda is 12, then my sample means should cluster around 12, in a normal distribution and spread out by this standard error formula. So I would have 12.02, 12.04, 12.06, right? Then over here, 11.98, 11.96, 11.94, all right? And then I test this, right, with a sample. Well, the sample is 12.3. So we say, okay, where's my sample? Y bar is 12.3, well technically it's way out here, it's so far off the mean, so if I have, to, or the distribution, if here's 12, and I'm out here at 12.06, 12.3 would be somewhere way out here, I can't even really draw it on there. And theoretically I would shade to the right because of the direction of the inequality in my alternative, I would shade this way, right? But that's the theory, right? That's what I gotta go with. So now I find my T score, T is how far is my sample value from the mean or the standard error, right? So technically that's y bar minus mu over standard error y bar. So in our case we're going to have t is how far is 12.3 from 12 over my standard error 0.02. And I'll get 15. That's really, really far. That's what we're trying to say here that it's that far away. All right, and then I would shade to the right. So now I'm going to use, instead of normal CDF, I'm going to use TCDF. Right? It's located in the same place as normal CDF. And you're going to do the same thing you would have with normal CDF. If this had been a yes-no trait, you would have said, okay, I'm going to go from, instead of T-score, this Z-score, out to infinity 100. So you would have said 15, 100. And you would have been done. You would have put it in normal CDF and done. But now we have to put one more value in here, which is the degrees of freedom. Why? Well, we have to tell the calculator which t distribution to use. With a yes-no trait, you just had one distribution. It was the normal distribution. But now you have a family of distributions. They're all sample size dependent. And we really need to tell it which, which t distribution. So remember, our sample size is 18. Degrees of freedom is 1 less, 17. So that's what I'm going to do. Put that in there. Now let's see, we're going to go ahead and I'll do this on the calculator with you, okay? And what we'll see is we'll go to second VARS, right? and we're going to go to TCDF. Now, it, on different calculators, it might be item 5, 6, 7, four. but there it is, TCDF, and I want to go from 15, comma is above the 7, 100, comma, and then 17 is my degrees of freedom, and now press enter. All right, so what you can see is I get 1.548 e to the negative 11, all right? So let's just say 1.54 e to the negative 11, which we know is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11, which, again, if I make that into a decimal, that's 10 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then one. Five. Sorry. <laughs> so there's my decimal. 
So of course that's what? Zero. And we knew that because look, there's my sample. There was no chance this is true. So obviously this is my p-value, which is the probability of getting the sample I got if I assume, I assume that this null is true. Well, since there was no chance of getting that, my model predicted what was going to happen at a terrible rate. I do not keep my null, right? I reject it. So I say p-value compared to the significant level alpha, zero is so much less than 5% that we reject the null and say there is strong evidence that the average amount of cola in brand X cola, brand X cans is greater than 12 ounces, right? So remember, that's what this said. This said the average amount of cola in brand X is greater than 12 ounces. All right, that's what this statement said. And remember, when we write our conclusions, it's either there's strong evidence or there's not enough evidence for the alternative. Since we rejected the null, we're saying this is likely to be true, so we say there is strong evidence that, and then there's your sentence. Right? So that's how I would conclude that. Thanks so much for listening.